Barotrauma is a potentially fatal condition for fish, which mainly affects fish caught in water deeper than 20 metres. It occurs when a fish is hauled to the surface and the air within the fish's swim bladder expands as pressure decreases. Barotrauma causes internal damage and may prevent the fish from swimming down from the water surface, leaving it prone to sun damage and predators. A fish that has been affected by barotrauma may have a hard or bloated gut area, parts of its gut extending into its mouth or out of its rear, or more severe symptoms such as bulging eyes and bleeding. A fish that has a burst swim bladder may not display any symptoms as the air may have escaped from its mouth or rear as it was brought to the surface. If you catch a fish showing signs of barotrauma, there are three methods you can use to help it return to deeper water. The preferred method is to use a release capsule or cage, which is basically a weighted inverted landing net. Step one, gently remove the hook from the fish or cut the line if the fish is gut hooked. Step two, have the release capsule ready and gently release the fish into the water. If the fish floats and cannot swim below the surface, quickly place the release capsule over the fish and allow it to drag the fish down. Allow the fish to be dragged down to the depth at which it was caught, or to at least 10 metres below the surface. Step three, pull up the release capsule and allow the fish to swim away. Venting with a hollow needle allows trapped air to escape from the abdomen of the fish before it is released back into the water. Step one, gently remove the hook from the fish or cut the line if the fish is gut hooked. Step two, using a hollow needle or syringe, gently pierce a hole in the side of the fish to allow the gases to escape. Insert the needle under a scale at a 45 degree angle to the body, in line with the base of the pectoral fin and directly below the fourth dorsal spine. Avoid inserting the needle too deeply, as this could damage an internal organ. If this technique is performed correctly, you should hear the sound of air escaping as you insert the needle. Applying gentle pressure to the abdomen may force additional trapped air from the fish. Step three, gently release the fish back into the water. Using a release weight involves placing a barbless hook in the fish's mouth. Step one, gently remove the hook from the fish or cut the line if the fish is gut hooked. Step two, insert a weighted barbless hook that is attached to a fishing line through the fish's top lip from the outside. Step three, gently place the fish in the water and release the line, allowing the weight to drag the fish down. Allow the fish to be dragged down to the depth at which it was caught or to at least 10 metres below the surface. Step four, hold the line to stop it running out further and the fish will swim away. While these techniques may improve post-release survival rates for specific species of fish, they will not necessarily help all species. Follow these guidelines for snapper, terraglin and pearl perch. Snapper are quite resilient to catch and release with a survival rate of almost 90% if they are handled gently. Usually, barotrauma affects snapper taken from water deeper than 20 metres. The fish can have a swollen abdomen, or the stomach may protrude from the mouth or rear, or a combination of both. The symptoms can become worse the longer the fish is at surface level. 
However, some snapper will not display any symptoms of barotrauma if the swim bladder has ruptured on the way up and bladder gases have escaped. These fish will usually swim back to capture depth upon release with no problems. The swim bladders of line caught snapper have been found to heal in two to three days. If you are not sure whether a snapper is suffering barotrauma, assume that it is and treat it prior to release. Make sure you return the fish to the water as quickly and gently as possible. Taraglin are not resilient to catch and release, with a survival rate of less than 50% if caught from depths of less than 50 metres. Virtually none survive catch and release if caught from depths greater than 80 metres. If a taraglin displays symptoms of barotrauma, use one of the release methods to ensure it returns to deeper water. If you are venting with a hollow needle, apply gentle pressure to the abdomen to force out the air. If you are not sure whether a taraglin is suffering barotrauma, assume that it is and treat it prior to release. For this species in particular, it is essential to release fish as quickly and gently as possible after they are caught. Pearl perch are resilient to catch and release, with a survival rate of more than 90%. In most cases, pearl perch suffer from barotrauma even though they rarely display symptoms. This is because pearl perch swim bladders rupture during ascent from deep water and swim bladder gases escape into the gut cavity. As the fish approach the surface, the alimentary tract ruptures near the rear, allowing swim bladder gases to escape before the fish reach the surface. The swim bladders of lion caught pearl perch have been found to heal in two to three days. Do not treat pearl perch for barotrauma unless they show symptoms, but always release them quickly. By using these release methods, you can help fish affected by barotrauma return to deeper water and maximise their survival. Catch and release is a responsible way of fishing for the future. Make sure the fish you release are the ones that survive.